Okay, we're live on YouTube. And we're live in the webinar. And we're recording. So welcome to our Roots Magic webinar. Uh, I'm Michael Booth. And we've got the Roots Magician, Bruce Busby, here. And today's topic is working with files in Roots Magic 8. And of course, if you miss any of our webinars, want to see upcoming webinars, just go to our website at rootsmagic.com slash webinars. We had a really good one last week with uh, covering all the new features in Roots Magic 8. And now we're going to start going more in depth into all the features. And for those of you joining us on Zoom, there is a chat window. There's also a Q&A window, and I'm going to be trying to watch the Q&A window a little bit more um, in terms of questions that people have. And uh, wow, we've got a lot of people from all over saying hello. We've got uh, North Texas, we've got Florida, Arizona, Kentucky, Washington, ah, Leicester, England. Welcome. And Dolly says, hi, glad to have Roots Match Gate. We are glad you have it, Dolly. Um, it's been a long time coming. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. That's for sure going into it. London, California, um, Netherlands. And there's Wellington, New Zealand, Mexico, New Brunswick. Wow, we've got people from all over. So welcome. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'll just turn the time over to Bruce. Okay, well, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my screen here. Um, as Mike mentioned, we're gonna talk about working with files in Roots Magic 8. And there's a lot of things we can do with files. Um, besides just opening and closing them. And so we're gonna kind of show you a little bit of everything having to do with these files. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when you first start up Roots Magic, you're going to be on a screen that looks like this. You're going to have, um, you're going to have your, your homepage will come up by default. Now, some of the things that you can do with files actually are available right here on, on the home screen. For example, you can create a new file, you can open a file, you can import a file from another program, or you can download a, uh, your, some data from FamilySearch or from Ancestry. It's also going to show you your recently opened files, and you can just click on any of those uh, to go ahead and uh, open them right up. What I wanna do first is I wanna point out a feature right here. And this has to do with files and the file it has to do with is the program file itself. So right now I have 8.0.0 installed right here. But you'll notice when I come to this homepage, it tells me there's an update available. And it also more detail right here. And so I can actually click on the more information. If I click on that, it'll open up a browser. A window that'll tell me what's new about this update. Uh, or I can just click download version 8.0.1 and the program is going to automatically download the update for me. And it's going to tell you it's now going to close so the update can be installed. I'm going to say okay. It's going to shut down my program. It's going to say hey do you want to actually do this update? I'm going to tell it yes. And it's going to open up and it's going to install my update for me. So right now it's installing the update. It takes care of all of that for me automatically. And then when it's done, this is going to shut down. And it starts my program right back up. So I'm going to wait for it to finish coming up. Okay, there we go. And now, I'm up to date. You can see I have the latest update, 8.0.1. And I wanted to show you that one so that you know how to do updates. If that update doesn't work, if for some reason your system doesn't seem to like doing the automatic update, you also had the option, and it's gone now since I did the update, but you have the option that says alternate update 
uh, alternate update link. And that will take you to our website where you can just click and download the update and do the install manually. Um, but one of the features that is new in this update is one of the things I want to show you in a little, just a little bit here. So from the, from the home screen, like I say, you can open a file or you can go to the file page. And this is where everything having to do with files is going to be. So you can come in here and, and we're going to come back in here in just a little bit, but I'm going to do the quick and dirty one. Um, I'm going to, well, let's actually do it this way. I'm going to go into file and I'm going to say I want to create a new roots magic file. Now, when I say I want to create a new roots magic file, the first thing it asks me is, do I want to create an empty file? Do I want to import from roots magic one through seven? Or do I want to download my data from Ancestry or Family Search? So if I happen to have data already in Roots Magic, I would want to click this option right here. I'm going to click empty file first because I want to show you a couple of things here. So when I click empty file, the first thing it asks me, whenever it's going to create a new Roots Magic file, the first thing it's going to ask is where do I want this new file to be? And it's going to show me my default folder. And it's going to show me any recent folders that I've worked with. Now, if I don't see it as my default and I don't see it as a recent, but I want to store it someplace else, I can click browse for a destination and that opens up my regular old Windows folder or my regular Windows uh, folder selection so that I can go select that folder. But let's say you, you want to have a different folder then documents, that's gonna be the default folder by default is your documents folder. Well, let's say that I have, I wanna keep my data in a different place, but I want it to always come up as my default folder. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna to go to settings and under settings, one thing that's nice about this is you notice I was able to just switch to settings without changing everything. I'm gonna to go to settings and I'm gonna to go to the folder settings and Let's say I want to look in C colon backslash temp. That's what I want for my data folder. So I'm gonna come back over here. And now when I create a new Roots Magic file and say, you see now temp is my default folder. So you can set that default folder to whatever you want. By default, like I say, it's your default, it's your, it's your documents folder on your computer. But by just going into the settings, I can change that to whatever I want. If I happen to want that to stay back to my D documents folder, I just go delete it, come back in here, and now it's back to being my documents folder. Okay, so what I would do is I just want to, I would just select, select that, and then enter the name for my, for my new file, click save, and it creates my new Roots Magic file. Okay, but most people, most likely are going to be coming from Roots Magic, an earlier version of Roots Magic or another program. So most of the time they would select this import from Roots Magic one through seven. And you would click that and Roots Magic is going to say, what, what program are you importing this data from? If you have a Mac, you're not going to see as many options because a lot of these file formats require special database engines that are not available on the Mac. And we have to use those to do the import. So some of the Mac, the Mac will show you the, some of the, the Roots Magic and the GEDCOM. But if I want to import a Roots Magic file, I'm going to click on that. It's going to find files, any Roots Magic 7 files I have. If it doesn't find them, just again, come down and click on browse for file and go using the Windows, the Windows uh, screen, go to the Windows File Explorer, go select where that file is. So I would just select the file I want to import. I want to import that one. Again, it's asking me where I want to save my Roots Magic 8 file. Now, when you import your data from Roots Magic 7, that's, that's what it actually is, is an import. So in, in older versions, like in Roots Magic, when you went from four, to five, to six, to seven, whenever you opened up a Roots Magic file from the older version, it would actually convert that older file into the new version. Uh, we don't do that with this because we want to be able to allow people to bring their data over into eight, but leave their version seven file alone so they can still use version seven if they want to. So I'm going to say I want to create this new Roots Magic eight file in documents. 
And then what do I want to call it? And it's basically going to use the same name as the file that I had just I had just selected the sample, but it gives it an RM tree extension instead of RMGC. So once I finish this, I will have a sample.rmgc, which is a Roots Magic 7 file that works with Roots Magic 7. And I'll have a sample.rm tree file, which works with version 8. So I click save. I select whatever options I want, date formats, any options, and I click OK. And Roots Magic creates the file, imports my Roots Magic 7 file, and opens my Roots Magic 7 file up right here. So, or, or opens up what was Roots Magic 7, but this is now a Roots Magic 8 file. Okay. Now we had some we had some users early on who were having a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this file. If you wanna delete a file, it's under tools. When you go to file, you're gonna come here to tools and you're gonna have your delete. And then you confirm, yes, I wanna delete that and you tell it okay, and it deletes that file. Okay, but we had, we had uh, some issues where people were saying, I can't get my Roots Magic 7 data in. I can't figure out how to do it. And what we discovered was that what people were doing was they were saying file, and then they were trying to open, uh, even though it says open Roots Magic 8, they were thinking that that would allow them to open the Roots Magic 7 file as well. And it, and it didn't, unfortunately. So that update that I just that I just downloaded, which we released last week. Now, if you go into open, if you go into open, you will see now that it will show you Roots Magic 7 files. And so it's showing me the root the, the Roots Magic 8 files and it finds these Roots Magic 8 files, but it also now finds a Roots Magic 7 file as well and lets you click on it. When you do that, it tells you, hey, this has to be converted to a new format. We're going to now create a new file and import your data. You click OK. And what it does is it's now stepped over. It's kind of moved over to the import. Um, and so the way you do it hasn't changed. It just allows you to be able to find that Roots Magic 7 file from open and it, it moves you over to where it needs you to be. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and back out of this again. I'm gonna go back over here to file. So when I create a new Roots Magic file, like I say, I have several options. I can create an empty file. I can do the import. And if I click import, I select this and then it steps me through just like I showed before. And I can also say download from an online tree. If I select that, I choose, am I wanting to download a file from Ancestry or to family search? Okay, and this is if you wanna bring data from one of these websites into a new Roots Magic file. Okay, if you if your Roots Magic 7 file was already linked up with Family Search or Ancestry, you don't need to do this. This is for this is for bringing in uh, a, a brand new tr Ancestry tree or a brand new set of data from Family Search into a new Roots Magic file. Okay, now the other the other thing we also have here is Roots Magic to go. And for those who are not familiar with Roots Magic to go, what that does is that lets you install Roots Magic onto a flash drive. You can put the program, the Roots Magic program, on a flash drive, and you can put your Roots Magic database on that flash drive as well. Now, what's great in Roots Magic 8 that's new is you can now import both, you can you can install both the Roots Magic for Windows and the Roots Magic for Mac on that flash drive. And so you can have one flash drive that has Roots Magic for Windows, Roots Magic for Mac, and your database, all three on that one flash drive. So you can go to a library computer or to uh, a, a friend, maybe you're visiting a relative, and you can plug that flash drive right into their computer and you can work on your data, data right there. And it doesn't matter whether, whether they happen to have Windows or a Mac, because you can now have both of those on there. In, in back in Roots Magic 7, you could only have Roots Magic to go on Windows. You couldn't do a, a Mac version, but now you can have them and they can both sit there on that same flash drive. Now, what this actually does is when you click on that, what it does is it opens up a window. It opens up a browser window. And what this 
this does is this takes you to a page on our wiki, on our help wiki, and it explains exactly how to do this. It explains how to install Roots Magic on your Windows, your Windows version on, it explains how to copy the Mac version on, and then how to uh, put your files, then how to put your files on there as well. So it just steps you, it just steps you right through how to create that flash drive with both Windows and Mac versions of Roots Magic and your data as well. Okay, now if I go and open a file, and again, I can either do that from home and I can just select it from right here, or I can come over here and say open it. When I open a file, I, I tend to always do it from home just because it's easier. When I open a file, this home window changes a little bit in that with a file open, instead of having, instead of having commands for open a file, uh, you know, close a file, all of those, you now shows your, it now shows your home, your file properties. So it shows when this file was created, when it was modified, and how many people, families, events, and so on are in that file. So it shows you shows you all those properties of that file. So once you have a file open, um, again, like I say, you can't open a file from here. So that's when you are going to want to go to that file tab. And at that point, you can now click open a Roots Magic file. That will allow you to open up another file. It'll open up another window with that new file in it. So you'll have two windows, one with each database in it. You can also create a new Roots Magic file, which will create the new Roots Magic file and open it up in a separate window as well. If you've created a backup, if you've created a backup, you can always restore from a backup. And just like these others, it basically just steps you through a wizard. If I say I want to restore from backup, it finds the backups. You click which one you want, then it's going to say, you know, where do you where do you want to restore that? You know, what folder do you want to restore it in? And then it will just take care of that for you. It'll restore that backup for you. Okay. When a file is open, though, you then have it, it shows you what file is open, and then you have a, a bunch of other options right here that are available for you to do things. So if I want to make a backup of my database, of this database, I can come just come to the file tab, I click on backup, and I select a backup file name. It uses, it puts the date on if I want it there. I tell it where I want it to save it, or I can save the backup to Dropbox if I want as well. When I'm making a backup, by default, it basically, what it basically does is just zips up the file. And it it put it it makes the extension rm backup, but it's basically a zip, a, a zip file is what it is. Um, but by default, it only backs up the database itself. If you have media files, it does not back them up. It backs up the links, but it doesn't back up the media files themselves. If you do want those all your media files in that backup, what you'll do is before clicking backup is just check backup media files. And then when you click backup, it's going to back up the database and it's going to back up all of the media files as well. Just be prepared that if you have thousands of, of media files, that can take a long time to back it up because it's having to try to compress all of those media files and put them in there. It can also make your backup file really, really large as well. But it is an option if you do want a backup file that has everything, including your media, that, that does give you the ability to do that. When you restore, when you restore the backup, when you restore that backup, if it detects that that backup has media in it, it will ask you, do you want to restore that media? So it gives you the option, just restore the database or restore the database and the media as well. Okay, so import and export. Again, like, like we showed you, if, if, if with importing data, if you say you want to create a new file, it has a shortcut right here for the import, you know, where you say I want to import it into this new file. But you can also say import data from here as well. And when you import data, you have that option uh, importing from Roots Magic or JEDCOM or another program. Um, if you're on an existing database, if you've got a file open, you'll notice when I click on this, the only one that's, open, that's actually available is JEDCOM. You'll notice it doesn't allow me to import any of these other types. And that is because these other types 
really re need to be imported into a new empty database. GEDCOM is the one format that really easily can be imported into an existing file. So if you've got a file already, just be, just be aware that if you say import GEDCOM here, that that GEDCOM is going to be mixed in with your existing database. So, uh, you know, you'll, you may have some, you may have some cleanup to do some, some records to merge and things like that. Okay, but in addition to import, you can also download from an online tree. That's the same as, again, when we do the create a new file, that works the same way. It's just a different way of getting there. And that's going to be, do I want to import from Ancestry or Family Search as well? Okay, but this one right here, this is a neat little feature, import lists. And what this does is you tell it which file you want to import. And so I can just go select one of these files. And Ruth Medge is going to, to bring up this particular screen to let you select what you import. So while the import from another program lets you import all the data from that other program, this lets you import just parts of another file into the existing database. Um, so for example, fact types. So uh, or multimedia items, places, repositories, tasks, sources, or source templates. So if you've created a database and you've entered a number of sources and you want to use those sources in a new database, what you can do is just go in and create a new blank database and then come here and say, I want to, um, you just come into here and you say, I want to, um, uh, I want to import lists. Okay, and when you import those lists, you basically can tell it, okay, I just want the sources from that other file. And what Roots Magic will do is it will go out to that other file. It won't import any of the people, but it will import all of the sources that were in that other file into your new file or import all of the fact types. Now, if you do import fact types, it doesn't double up all your all your all your existing fact types. It will import the ones that are that that you've created new. So if you've created, if you've got a bunch of custom fact types that you want to use in new databases, uh, you can do that as well. So that's that's so that's what import list is for it's a great way to be able to pull just pieces of the other data into your file okay export data this one's pretty straightforward it's just creating um, a gedcom file mainly uh, but you can also upload to a new ancestry tree or you can upload it to dropbox so if you're using one of the roots magic apps this lets you by clicking this this will upload your file uh, to to Dropbox so that the so that the app can find that. Now you notice that some of these things like this uploading to an ancestry tree, it's been, it's in like three different places. And the reason for that is because everybody's different. People look in different places to find the same thing. And so what we try to do is anticipate, you know, how might a person be looking for this? And we put that and try to make that available in those different places. It does the same thing. Each one does the same thing. It's just make, hopefully makes it easier to find something uh, without having to necessarily remember, you know, if I want to, if I want to, to, you know, send, create, send a tree to and uh, up to ancestry, you know, do I, do I go to import? Do I go to export? Do I go to publish? Do I go to whatever? And we try to make it available in all of those places. If you want to close the file, that one's straightforward. That's right there. Um, and that just closes this file, but leaves this window open so you can open another file in this window. And then there's tools. And tools is where you're going to find all the kinds of things that you can do with this Roots Magic file. Okay. So if I want to move this Roots Magic file to someplace else, I click on move. I choose the new location of the file. So if I wanted to move it to some other folder, I can, if I wanted to move it to the temp folder, I can click on it because that's one I've recently used. Or I can click again, browse for destination. I can select the folder and Roots Magic will move this database from the 
documents folder that it's in or from the temp folder, whichever folder it's in, from whatever folder it's in to the new folder that I selected. It actually takes it and physically moves that folder, that file to a new folder. Another option, and the reason it has rename is when I go in here, if I pick the same folder, so like if I'm, if this happens to be, it looks like it's in the temp folder. If I select the temp folder, it's basically saying it's in the temp folder, but what I can do is I can change the name. Okay, so I can keep it in the same folder and just change the name. So that's that's why this is move or rename. It lets me move a file to another folder or just rename the file and leave it in the same folder. Um, I can actually also move it to another folder and rename it the same as well. So if I enter a new name, it would move it and rename it. Copy is basically what it sounds like. It says, where do you wanna copy the file? I choose where I want it to go and it will take the, my database that I'm in right now and make another copy of it in the new location. So whereas move takes it and physically takes it out of the old location and puts it in the new location, copy makes a copy of it and puts a copy of it into the new location. Okay, delete, I actually already showed you that earlier, but what that does is, do you wanna delete this database? You have to confirm, yes, I wanna delete it before it will actually delete it. Okay, you also have compare. Compare, and it, what that does is you select another tree, and I can try this randomly, and I don't know how it's going to work, but I'll, I'll pick another file here, and it's going to go through and compare my the file I have open with the file that I just gave it, and what it does is it goes through and and compares it, and it can take a while, and I probably shouldn't have done this, but but because these two files are completely different. Um, but if you have if you have a database and you've you find that you've got an you've got another database that's maybe a little bit newer or maybe a little bit older, and you want to see what the differences are, then what you can do is go and select those two files, and it will show you the people in this tree that you have open, the people in the other tree, and it will show you how well they, those match. So it'll show you how the matches are. And again, you're not gonna, like I say, these are two different trees. So there's not gonna be any matches. It's gonna show you the people in that tree and the people in that tree. But if your files are pretty close to the same, you're gonna see them both in there. They're gonna be matched up. And when you select one, it's going to show you the person in your tree that you're working on and the person in the other tree that matches. And you can actually copy data back and forth. So if you see that, if you see that this other tree has some data that you need, you can click on it and actually bring the data over from one file into the other. Okay, so that's compare files there. I'm gonna go back into tools here again. These bottom four, these actually are database tools. So these have to do with the underlying structure, the actual SQLite file itself. So that it's not testing for things really like, um, it's not really testing for things like, like is the is this person really married to that person? We have problem reports that do that type of thing. This tests the integrity of the actual file. And on a really huge database, it can take a long time. It's, it's pretty cryptic. It basically is telling you the integrity of the database is okay. That means you're good to go. But if, if, there, are, if there are weird things in the actual SQLite structure of the file, you know, it may give you that. Now, a lot of times there's not really much you can do about that. It's not something you can really fix or easily fix. But what it does is if it comes up and says it's not okay, it's basically telling you that the uh, that you may you may want to kind of look at making sure you've got uh, you know export a JEDCOM and try to try to get some your, you know make sure your data stays safe because if the integrity of the database goes you may want to actually restore a backup because uh, it means your database is kind of in trouble. You can rebuild the indexes, compact the database. Compact goes through and um, the compact goes through and will. Get rid of get rid of records that have been deleted that are still using up space, um, and you can do that anytime you want. It doesn't hurt anything to do it one way or the other. Same with rebuild indexes. Rebuild indexes goes through, and and basically 
freshens up the links between records. So for example, in the in a Roots Magic file, you've got a bunch of person records, but then you also have family records. And a family record will point to the person that's the, the person record that's the dad and the person record that's the mom, for example. And this goes through and just freshens those up and makes sure that they've they're all, you know, none of them have been corrupt. And if they're corrupt, it rebuilds them and takes care of that. Now clean phantom records, this one this one is one that is actually really useful to run occasionally. And what that does, it, you, you may have seen, if sometimes you may have gone into your family view, for example, example, and looked at a family, and you might see one of the children is like an empty, is empty. It's not really, there's, it's like they're not really there. And that's called a phantom record. And a phantom record is when you have some of these index pointers that says this record's connected to that record, but that record doesn't actually exist. That's called a phantom record, when you have a pointer to a record that doesn't actually exist. And that's what clean phantom records does, is it goes to your database and looks for things that are, that for, for records that the program thinks are there, but they aren't really there. And so it will clean those out. Um, and so that's a very useful one, especially if you start to see kind of weird, weird linky things inside your database. This is usually the first thing you want to come try to kind of to kind of clean that up. So anyways, well, that's a quick overview of files. Now there's one other area having to do with files that is not necessarily working with the database files themselves, and that's under publish. And under publish, when you generate a report, if you go in and generate a report, you do have the ability right here. Once the report is generated and you see it on the screen, you have the ability to click, and this is with any report or any chart, you have the ability to save it to a file. And if you click on that, it'll show you the options you have. And so every report can be saved to a PDF, okay? Whether it's a big chart, whether it's uh, a pedigree chart or any of, them, any of them can be saved to a PDF. But some reports, can also be served to a Microsoft, can be saved to a Microsoft Word, a DocX. So in the old days, we used to save it to rich text, which was a kind of a, kind of barely a standard. And so it didn't always work real well uh, all the time. Um, Microsoft Word format is a very well documented standard. And so if it, you, can, you can save many of these reports to Microsoft Word. Now, some of the reports, uh, that happen to be a list. If, it, if you have a report that's a list of something, in addition to being able to save those to Microsoft Word, you may also see an option for Excel. Now, uh, now obviously a pedigree chart would not go into Excel. I mean, it, it would, would look horrible. But anything that's a list or a table, uh, there'll be an option for Excel. And you can actually save that as a native Excel file, a .xlsx file. Um, some files can be saved to text. Some files can be saved to um, to HTML. There's a number of there's a number of different formats that it may it may offer, and which files it allows you to save to basically depends on the on the report itself. If it's a report that saves nicely into one of those formats, that format will become available for you to save it. So even though that's not really related to files within the program, it is it is file related. So I figured I'd just kind of show you that, that, that it, most of these reports can be saved in a number of different file formats. So that is a quick overview on, on using files, uh, using and working with files in Roots Magic 8. So I guess I'll kind of switch it back to Mike and see if there's any questions. Yeah, so, um, okay, so first of all, there's uh, several questions about cloud services. So uh, we had the save to Dropbox feature and uh, which it will allow Roots Magic to directly interface with Dropbox. Even if you don't have it on your computer, you can save your Roots Magic file to Dropbox. Uh, a lot of questions are, well, are you gonna add support for Google Drive? iCloud, OneDrive, um, you know, insert your own cloud storage option. 
Yeah, those are those are items that we're looking at. Um, to be to be honest, the cloud working with the cloud is not something that we are going to natively write. Um, we're using a cloud library uh, that that interfaces with a number of these, and we will be looking at, at supporting supporting uh, some of the ones that they have. Now that being said, we've actually already found a bug in that library on the Mac. It's 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 having some issues on Dropbox currently, and we're working with that comp with the company that creates this cloud library to to try to get that addressed. Um, once that's addressed, then we'll then we'll look at the the others. The others. We want to make sure that whatever we um, whatever we provide, we make sure that it's available for both Windows and Mac. We don't really want to be putting things in that only work with one or the other because it our tech support you know gets pounded when they're like, well, why can they do that and we can't? So. Um, so it is something we're looking at. It's not something we're promising. You know, we've gotten to where we don't promise really anything, anything. But they are those are areas that we're looking at. And I think it's also important to note that if you use OneDrive or iCloud or uh, Google Drive, generally you will have a folder on your computer, and anything you put in that folder is synchronized to the drive. And so you can. Put your Roots Magic files in one of these folders, and they'll automatically upload it to the cloud. There's some cautions if you do that, but that's still a possibility. So, in that regard, we do work with all these different cloud services. Okay, um, another question. There's been a few of them uh, about exporting to a JetCom file. If you can export only specified people, or do you have to? export your entire file when you export to jedcom yeah when you export to jedcom i'll just go down here to export data and you select jedcom um, you choose what folder it's going to go into and then you enter a file name and then roots magic will come up with this option right here and this is where you tell it what types of data you want to export um, if you want to privatize the jedcom you can do that as well but right here people to export by default, it exports everyone, but you can click on that. And if you've created any groups, you can actually just select the group. If you only want to export a group of people, you just select the group, the group, whatever group you've created, and you and it'll export. Or you can say, I want to select from a list, and that opens up Roots Magic Explorer. And from here, you can select whatever people you want. Now you can do it the hard way and click people one at a time, you know? So, I mean, you can be as specific as that, or you can come up here to mark people. And when you say we want to mark people, you can mark families and that'll bring up a list of families to select from, or you can say everyone in the file and it'll put a check mark next to everybody, which is the same as choosing everybody in the first place. Everyone in a person's tree, the ancestors of the highlighted person, that means you highlight a person in the list, choose that, and it's going to ask you how many generations. Do you want just the direct ancestors? That would be parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. Do you want ancestors and descendants? So that would be in addition, in addition to your parents, you can choose it to come back, you know, say one generation worth of children. So that would get you it would get your parents and then their children. So it would be your brothers and sisters. You'd get your grandparents and their children. That would be your aunts and uncles. Um, you can also make that number bigger, you know, and then you can also choose ancestors and all collateral lines. You know, same type of thing with a person and their descendants, person and genetic lines. By data fields, that opens up a screen. And this is where you can say everybody whose color code is blue or everybody who was born in this town um, between this date and that date. That's where you can pick anybody by almost any kind of data. And it will it will mark them based on based on their data fields or only living or only deceased people. So yep, you can you can export, you can export, you can kind of filter it down to almost any level you can think of. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of questions that are just, it's kind of getting back to the same, same root question. And that is, are Roots Magic files created on the Windows version compatible with the Roots Magic files on the Mac? Okay, yes. The Roots Magic file 
that you create on Roots Magic 8 on Windows is exactly the same file as created on the Roots Magic 8 on the Mac. They're exactly the same. So you can you can take your dot dot rm tree file from Windows and put it on your Mac and open it up, open it up directly uh, in Roots Magic 8 for the Mac. It doesn't, it doesn't go through any conversion or anything. It doesn't have to import, convert anything. It's they're exactly the same file. Now, the only th what the, I guess I could point out, the only one thing that might be a little different, uh, it, the file itself will be different, but if you're linked to media, that might be a little bit different, but we actually have actually have put in some smarts so that, for example, if you've got a Roots Magic 8 file on Windows and you keep your, you keep your media like in the program files folder or in your documents folder or you know one of those standard type folders and you copy your roots magic 8 file over to your mac and you put your media on the mac's document folder or or media folder or program or the the data file folder then the, the even the media will will remain linked up so even that you don't even in, in in a lot of those cases you don't even have to go through that fine broke fixed broken media links thing, but keep in mind that since we do store the path that it can if you're storing your media scattered all over that when you put it on the Mac you know it it may not find your media automatically. Yeah, and that's that's really a topic for when we have webinar on media. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely yep. talk more about that. I'm actually seeing a lot of questions about different things, um, drag and drop and different things, tasks, which we will address in future webinars. Uh, we're going to have these regularly. We're um, trying to go through all the features in here and give a nice, good overview of everything. So unfortunately, we can't uh, go into detail on those today. Um, Okay, so, but uh, we do have a lot of questions about technical support. So just wanna address that. Um, right now, of course, Roots Magic 8 has only been out a week. And so you can imagine we've had a lot of excitement, a lot of questions, a lot of tickets for technical support. So right now, um, in terms of live chat and phones and everything, uh, you're not likely to get a hold of anyone because all of our technicians are dealing with all the email tickets that have been coming in. And so once, once all those tickets have, they've been able to catch up on all the tickets, then um, these other support options will become available again. So in the meantime, as of right now, as of today, the best way to get a hold of someone is by emailing support at rootsmagic.com. Yeah, and if you do actually go to the chat, you'll see that there's nobody available for chat, and it will actually say, "Do you want to? Do you want to? You know, do this email?" So it will actually direct you to that. So, yeah. So um, I think that's that's pretty good. I've been covering a lot of the questions here, uh, just answering them. Okay, so um, I guess that is it for our webinar today. Oh, a couple of questions about to go. Um, let's see. So how big of a thumb drive, USB drive is needed? Um, generally, I mean, the smallest thumb drives I think are available today are like four or eight gigabytes, which is more than enough space. Um, yeah, and we will have an update in the near future that will have uh, the Roots Magic to go interface. Um, and all the other questions dealing with other topics, we're going to have to, have to save for another time. So uh, thank you for joining us today for this quick webinar dealing with working with files in Roots Magic 8. And uh, we will see you. Uh, soon for our next webinar. Thanks for joining us.